My name is Tandra and I'm your host and I'm joined today by Kalon VP CEO, Clive Butko. How's it, Clive? How are you doing, Tandra? I'm awesome. And yourself? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Yeah, man. Um, so Clive actually decided to not um, go away this week and decided, decided to chat with our community today. He was supposed to be on a flight to Cape Town. <laughs> so thanks so much for sticking with us, Clive. No, it's a pleasure. You gave, you gave me an excuse not to get in the airplane, so I'm happy. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. So today we're actually going to chat about um, the capital raise currently on Easy Equities, and that's the Kalon uh, VP capital raise. And it's been on the platform since February, if I'm correct, Clive? Correct. That's correct. And so it's closing soon. Um, I think that's actually on the 29th of June. And so we wanted to give everyone a catch up on what the product is, the benefits of it. And so let's just jump into it. And everyone, um, you're welcome to ask questions on our Q&A section um, or have comments on the chat box as well. But Clive, I wanted to start with, I mean, if you can sort of give us an overview of the, the product and why it's special and unique, uh, especially to our Easy Equities community right now. Okay, thanks, uh, Stammer, John. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, welcome to all the, all, all, all the viewers. So firstly, just as way of introduction, so my name is Clive Butko. I was the ex-CEO of Accenture South Africa. Uh, I retired from Accenture in 2012 and then I formed, a year later, I started Kalon Venture Partners, which is a digital disruptive uh, venture capital company. So we've got, uh, we, we invest in very much innovation-led startups that are, that are operating in, in the tech space. Uh, before I go into any more detail, I'd like to just talk about, we are a Section 12J company. Now, Section 12J was something that was promulgated by National Treasury in 2009, and it was given a 12-year sunset clause, which ends in June, this, this month of 2021. Unfortunately, in the budget speech in February, uh, National Treasury never extended the sunset clause. So that's why Stan was saying the last time to invest and take the opportunity of saving on your tax. So... If you're a 45% marginal taxpayer, you will save that 45% tax. If you're a 30% uh, tax, uh, ta uh, taxpayer, you'll save 30% of your tax. So just about way of example, if you are a 45% um, marginal tax rate and you put in 100,000 Rand, typically you either give SARS 45,000 and you keep 55,000, or you can invest the whole 100,000 with, uh, with easy equities with, into Kalon and uh, you'll pay no tax on that. So you basically would have saved 45,000 Rand. You have 45,000 Rand risk-free capital. And this is the last opportunity, which is, which is basically next week, a week from today, which is about the 25th of June, when you'd need to have made your payment into, uh, into easy equities. So what we are really is, as I said, we're a digital disruptive uh, uh, technology fund. We've got enough fund that you'll be coming into. We've got seven investments, and I'm gonna talk quickly um, just at a high level, that these are all disruptive technologies. They've all been very much beneficiaries of the COVID uh, since COVID broke out in March. And we've just seen some unbelievable growth from these companies. I want to stress that our investment is very much like what happens in Silicon Valley. So I learned a lot of my skills working in Silicon Valley. It's the investing in those tech companies. So it's investing in where you're going to make a five, 10, 100 times return on your capital. It's not, there's no fixed dividend. We're not a dividend paying fund. So if you need you to get 10 or 8% dividends every year, this is not the fund for you. If you want to get a 30% IRR, like a three, two, three, if you put in 100,000 Rand, you want to get 300,000 Rand back in five to eight years, this is the type of fund for you. It's high risk, but it's very, very high return in relation to all the other Section 12J companies that are out there. 
And I think that's at a high level. I won't, I'll, I'll pass it back to Stanwood before I talk about uh, the companies that we, that we actually invest into and, and our share price. So Clive, you mentioned the, the, the tax component. Yeah, so the tax component and the capital gains from this fund, there are two sort of benefits um, in this. Am I correct in saying so? That's correct. So not so, so much sort of from a capital gain point of view. So the tax you get from day one, uh, if you make the investment now, we will through Easy Equity issue you a tax certificate. When you submit your tax in either your provisional tax pay or if you submit your tax in February of next year, 2022, you will just deduct the amount of this investment from your taxable income and it won't take that amount into consideration when it calculates your tax. So if your tax is a million rand, you put 100,000 in, it'll only tax you on 900,000. You'll get zero tax on that amount. On the capital gains end, once we repay you after five to eight years, we repay you all your capital. SARS will zero rate the, the investment and you will pay a capital gains tax of 18% on, on the capital gain. But really, when you look at from a tax point of view, we're looking at such a big return of three to four times return of your capital that the tax saving is actually quite irrelevant when you're investing in a fund like uh, Kalon Venture Partners. Mm, fantastic. And then just to just sort of rewind it back as well for our community, Clive, uh, I just want to say that, that the Section 12J is something that government instituted to sort of uh, bring more funding to small and medium enterprises and then therefore stimulate the economy. So this benefit um, actually as well, have, there's a bigger picture to it. So it's not just some kind of little loophole that, no, it's actually, it's meant to be this way. Um, so now going back forward. Um, so you mentioned the, 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 the tax incentives of it and the huge gains that people can expect. This is a high risk, high reward, as you had said, Clive. Is it because of the tech companies you have invested in or is it just the nature? Of, it, of this kind of you know the nature of venture capital Stanway, is it's, it's a risky asset class so the returns are always high or when, when you get it right you can, you can return very high numbers like the you know you put in a hundred thousand you get three four hundred thousand rand back that's significant returns compared to any other asset class that you'd invest that capital but great returns come with risk and there's no question anything when you're investing in a in a tech company um we we don't invest for in america they used to call it a 262 You'll get two home runs where you'll get a 10, 20, 100 times return in your capital. You'll get uh, six that you'll get, you know, one or two times return in your capital. And two of the companies will, will go out of business. And, and that two, two companies out of business is, you know, that's basic averages or the averages around the globe. We don't invest to, for our companies to go insolvent, but we understand that this can happen. But more importantly, we, we, when I talk through some of the companies we've got here, you'll see we've got opportunities of really getting to the 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 times our return on capital. And that's why we're pretty confident by coming into fund two, where we've really got these seven investments, it's already been de-risked to a certain extent because these seven companies are all doing well. So the risk to you as investors will be significantly de-risked from going into a, a cold uh, venture capital fund or a cold 12J fund that's got no underlying investments. We've got seven underlying investments and probably will have 10 to 12 underlying investments once we've raised all our capital. We've raised in this fund so, so far, we've raised about 105 million. Uh, and including this raise now, we're seeing it about 120, 130 million. So we'll have about say 140, 150 million plus the original 100 million, about a quarter of a billion rand assets under management that we'll need to deploy. Our first fund is fully deployed, which was 107 million. And this is our second fund, which has these seven companies, as I mentioned now. But that's where the risk and return comes into it. High risk, high return, but we think we've already de-risked this this fund quite substantially, but there is always still risk. For sure. And, and you said it's the nature of the, of the kind of investment. Now, the thing about venture capital, it's not something you can access on a stock exchange or something like that, Clive. And that's why this particular um, fund is unique on easy equities. And can you sort of just tell us sort of like, I guess, historically, traditionally, how it used to be, um, you'd need to like have hundreds of thousands to be able to even participate and invest in this kind of thing. Yeah, so, so the, the minimum, if you go to, if the, for the people that have gone directly with us, the minimum investment amount is 70,000 Rand and it's at a 1,400 Rand per share. So for 50, you have to get invest in a minimum of 50 shares and you pay 70,000 Rand up to a maximum of 2.5 million. What's nice to easy equities, we've really democratized this, uh, this access to the venture capital asset class. So anyone that can put in, I'm not sure exactly what the minimum is, but I think it's 10 Rand or 100 Rand, anyone with a very small amount of money can actually become part and invest in 
a, an asset class that was not uh, attainable to, to most individuals. You needed at least 70,000. Many of our competitors make it a minimum of a million rand, some 250,000 rand. So there's a, there's a vast range of minimums, but we've made it quite low of 70,000 rand, but through easy equities and why we're having this partnership is we've democratized this to all, all you guys as in potential investors, where you can come in for a minimum of, I'm not sure what it is, 10 or 100 rand on the easy equities platform. Yeah, the minimum is 100 rand, but I think it's great from 70,000 to 100 rand. It's something I, for me would be worthwhile, especially with my time horizon. Um, so Clive, if you do not mind, for those who would have received our email, I included a link to the video where you covered the seven companies you invested in. Um, but for those who would be on YouTube, which we will link that video on our YouTube page, but for those who might just spot this on YouTube later on, could you just give us an overview of those seven companies? Great, let me do that. So let me start with the first company. Many of you might know this company, it's called Ozo. It used to be called iPay. Now Ozo is a payment service provider. Now, I'm sure a lot of you who've got credit cards or haven't got a credit card, that doesn't matter, have gone into um, Take A Lot or Suburbanist or any e-commerce site or even bricks and mortar, and they've asked you what option you want to pay with. You want to pay with a credit card, you want to pay with a debit card, or you want to use electronic funds transfer. So Ozo is an EFT, electronic funds transfer option. And what it does, it basically is a bank-to-bank -bank transfer. So automatically... If you don't have a credit card, hypothetically, and so you, you people with don't have credit cards wouldn't be able to buy off places like uh, Superbalist or Take a Lot. They can use the EFT option. They can go into Ozo, and they transfer the money directly from their bank account to the to the Take a Lot bank account, and, and they can buy anything online. So this is a company that's been going for about six years. When we invested uh, three years ago, it was about 15 million rand company. It's about close to 100 million rand company now. They had about 10 people then, they've got about 84 people now. And the first, so there's something called gross merchant value. So when you make any, um, a, a purchase on take a lot or any, any site, Woolworths or pick and pay, however much you buy for, if you buy a, a football booth for 2000 Rand, that's gross merchant value, GMV. So the first time it took us to get to a billion Rand in Oza, it took us two years, nine months and 16 days to get to our first billion. In November last year, we got to our billion in 26 days. So we've done 1 billion, 1.3 billion every, every month since last November. We're doing one, about 1.3 billion, closer to 1.4 billion every single month. So the business keeps on growing. We're growing at close to, I think, 80% last year, 100% the previous year, 100% that previous year on that. But what is very exciting there, we've got over um, 5,000 clients that, that use Ozo. And in the last month, we've closed 100 enterprise clients. So every month, we're closing 100 additional 100 enterprise clients. We, we, we raised, very importantly now, we're raising capital in the company for growth in South Africa and Africa and, and around the globe. And we're raising capital at, a, at, a, at an amount significantly higher than what we paid for when we came and we bought our capital. So that's very exciting for us. It's well north of the billion rand we're raising capital at. And we came in and we invested, we invested an average of about 250 million. So if you can do the maths, you'll see that we, we're doing really nicely on Ozo. So Ozo is one of our, you know, that could be a 10. Uh, we don't know how, how high that thing can go, but there's so much interest from American investors, Japanese investors, South African investors. They want to come invest uh, a large amounts of money. We've got a Chinese investor that's just committed a term sheet of $20 million. And we're raising $30 million at the moment at that north of, of 1 billion rand. Mm. Uh, the second company, and please ask any questions and send the questions through, but the second co company is, is an artificial intelligence uh, bot, a conversational artificial intelligence called FinChat Bot. Uh, again, a company we've been growing close to 100% every single year. Um, we've just raised $1.5 million and we're raising another 1.5 million euro from a number of European investors. Uh, the CEO has gone out to operate out of France. So we, we, we're focusing on Portugal, France, and the UK. And we've got our first few clients in, in Europe. And we've got many, probably the top 20 financial services clients in South Africa. From uh, MTN, you know, Marway, Dal Direct, Bright, Investec, Bitvest Insurance, Pollard. These are our clients in FinChatBot. So it's a conversational AR. It allows you to buy funeral insurance or whatever without having to actually go through a call center. So it takes a real pain away. We all know what it's like going to a call center and hanging on for two hours and then actually losing the connection. This prevents that and helps you buy your insurance or helps you buy whatever you want to buy directly 
through a conversational bot without any need of going to, to a call center. And we've grown, as I think last year we grew our revenue at 77%, and we've raised capital from a whole lot of European investors. The third company is a company called Flow. Now, Flow is a prop tech company. It's a property technology company. So we really match buyers, sellers with renters, with tenants, with landlords. So if you've got property you want to sell or you want to rent, we find the, the buyers of that property or the renters of that property. Now, this business is, again, it's uh, run by two entrepreneurs that's, that have built a very big business and sold it. They're growing every month. Well, this month we grew at 75%, but they're growing on average about 30 40% every month, number of clients, uh, amount of revenue. And we access through Facebook and other means, other social media, about 20 million South African clients every single month. They're pretty much in most of the big property companies, uh, Only Realty, RealNet, U Realty, South Point, Similan, and many, many more. So most of the major property companies in South Africa are our clients as part of Flow. Once again, we should be raising capital at a, at a much larger amount later on in the year or the beginning of next year. The fourth company is a company called Senmark. Now, Senmark is a cyber security company, and I'm sure all of you on the line, there, out there, the 50 people that are on the line, at some point, you've probably been fished or scammed, i.e. someone has sent you an email from someone that you know from Standard Bank or from Kalon or from Easy Equities and someone that you trust, but they've actually scammed your email. They've sent it to you and asked you to click on the, click on the button and pay some money or do something. And this is what you call phishing and scamming. And, <coughs> and, scamming. and this send more prevents and makes the internet a safer place. So basically, if you implement the software from Sendmark, I cannot use your email address and send an email from my email address looking like it's your email address. It completely cuts it out. We, we go through about 300 million emails per month. We've already got over uh, 200 clients. We've got about 800 clients on POC. We're growing about 30, 40% every single month. And uh, we've won a number of awards already for, for this technology. So this technology is going a long way. Um, we, we're raising capital now at a, a very big amount compared to what we came in at. When we came in, it was a small company. It's grown, since we came in, it's grown at 1,500%. So literally wow. in about 18 months, it's grown 1,500% in, in revenue uh, year on year. But it really does make the internet a safer place. So if you are a small company, you speak to us about implementing Sandmark. It's not an expensive technology, and you can become safer, and you can, you can look after your stakeholders, your customers, your suppliers, your employees, your investors. Everyone can be looked after by the implementation of, of Sandmark. But as I said, it's grown very excitingly. It's grown 1,500% in the last 18 months. Our next company, our fifth one is called um, Mobis. Mobis is a digital marketing platform. So it uses what we call smart SMS. So it can, it'll take multi-choice. They've got a couple of million customers. It will send a smart SMS to their 2 million customers. And every single SMS is hyper-personalized for, um, for multi-choice. Let's give an example of this. If it's used, if one of our customers is Sportsman's Warehouse, it will know, let's say Stunworth is uh, interested in, in soccer. It will look at Sunwood's uh, purchasing record and see what he, what he buys there. And if he's a big, big uh, soccer fan, it will show him soccer balls or soccer nets or soccer, uh, you know, a, a Chiefs yeah. um, uh, a jersey or your Manchester United jersey, whatever it might be. For me, I'm a, I'm a boxer, so they'll show me all, all boxing equipment. So it hyper personalizes that and it zero rates the data. So even if you've got no data on your, left on your, on your SIM card, you're able to go in there and you're able to transact. You can buy, you can look at it, you can do whatever you like. They might send you your, your, your payments, your invoices or information, and you don't have to have any data to actually transmit. Mobis last year grew from 16 to 64 million. So 300% growth. And we're raising capital now at about three times what we invested at, at about $30 million. And we're raising $4 million of capital and ready to raise $2 million. And we hopefully will be raising our next $2 million uh, in the next next couple of weeks. The last company I'm going to talk about is a company called CarScan. Now, CarScan is, um, I don't know if any of you have had a problem with a, a bumper bash. So about one of years ago, I had a bumper bash. And the way I had to deal with that is I had to phone my insurance company. And I told my insurance company that um, I've had a bumper bash. They told me to go and get three quotes from three um, panel beaters. I had to go, now mainly now with COVID, you don't want to do that, but I had to go get quotes from three panel beaters very fraudulent, one panel beater gave me three quotes. I sent them back to my insurance company. They then sent an assessor. And three to four weeks later, I finally got approval to take it to one of the companies to go and get my, uh, my, my car fixed. 
What CarScan does, it automates this entire process. That using your camera, if you have an accident, you'll just get from your insurance company, you'll just get a little link on WhatsApp. You'll walk around your car, it'll take pictures of the, of the car, it'll show you the right lighting and everything like that. It'll pick up every, every dent, every scratch, every bump, whether it's on your tires, your windscreen, inside, interior, exter exterior. It will automatically send, based on your GPS location, wherever you are, it will send three to five quotes to the nearest panel meters. Within one hour, they would have responded back with a quote, plus um, uh, car scan will know exactly what the damage is. They'll check the quote compared to the damage. They'll send it back to the insurance companies digitally. And in one hour, they'll send you an email back saying, or WhatsApp back saying, go to Clive's Auto to get your, your car fixed. The other nice thing it does, if you hire cars, you would have probably had this problem, is you hire a car and you bring it back and it's got a, it's got a little bit of a ding in it. And they say to you, you caused this ding and you say, no, I didn't, the, the ding was already there. The nice thing about car scan, you take a picture when the car goes out, you take a picture when the car comes back and automatically car scan will tell you that, that, that ding or that bump or scratch was there or it wasn't there. And it's able to do that using this augmented reality and artificial intelligence uh, technology. We've just signed a big deal with Cars 45 in Nigeria. It's the biggest car buy sell um, portal in, 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 in Africa. And we've signed a deal and they're taking it out to all their clients and to about 14 countries around Africa as well. So it's again, a company that's growing quite substantially, but we're very excited with the growth of the company. Our seventh company is called iExperience. We just closed it about three weeks ago. So I'm not gonna to talk to you about uh, how we've done. But literally last year, the, the, the lowest growth we had was 77% in the chatbot. And the highest growth we had in the year was about a thousand percent of all our companies. So it ranges from you know 77 to 100 to 300 to 400 to a thousand percent growth. Our share price, if you bought shares last year at 1100 Rand, they were sitting at now at 1502 Rand. And that's for the people that invested in February 19, it's about a 33 percent IRR, so um, compound annual growth rate. And if you invested last year, it was about 77.3, and including taxes, was about 36.4. So we've had a very good run. The share price is climbing very well. And uh, that's, that's the companies. And I would love to open up to any questions that you might have, because I'm sure this, this is very exciting. We've got about 500 investors that have invested in the 220 million we've raised to date. And we hope we have a lot more investors coming through Easy Equities. Wow, this is exciting. When you say disruptive, this is really some disruptive technology and companies. This is actually exciting. So yep. great. That, that's great to hear. Um, we do have a few questions. And one, I'll start with Ngobani Zondi's question, which is, do we get exposure to all of these companies Clive is talking about? And then I'll start with that, Clive. I'll say, yes, you do via um, the Kalon VP fund that is currently on our platform. You just log into Easy Equities account, uh, go to new listings, and you should see it is right there. Um, and then, so can I just add to that? I mean, that's a very yeah. important question. That, that's the beauty about coming in now is you actually get ownership of these seven companies by coming in now. Might be a small ownership, but you're not getting companies that are, you know, that I didn't talk about now. All seven companies, are, they're six plus the one, you will actually get ownership of those companies if you invest now. And we haven't increased the share price from February, even though the share price has gone up, we've left it where it was in February, just because it's such a short time period between February and June, we've left the share price at 1,400 Rand per share. Awesome. And now speaking of the times to invest, um, Andre Bezadenhout actually asked, um, is it, uh, let me just get his question again. Sorry about that. He had asked, he had essentially asked, can he invest in it in a future date? Um, he's asking, can he invest in it in a future date um, after June, after the June, end of June cutoff? Unfortunately, Andre, that's, um... If you made the investment, you wouldn't get the tax savings. So there's no benefit. You could absolutely could invest. But this June now, in the next week, is the last time you can actually get the tax saving because SARS never extended the, the sunset clause. So unfortunately, this is the last opportunity with the tax saving. Yeah. So we want everyone to sort of sort of climb in and get access to it now rather than be sorry later on. Um, and then I have a question from... So this one's actually from Andre. I didn't see who the other question was from, but he had asked it. Um, he says... What about future forecasts? Um, he's also asking, what about future forecasts? Do you have those or um, what can you say about them? And I think Clive spent a significant amount of time actually saying how much has grown in the past and we can't actually give future predictions. Am I right, Clive? You can just- Yeah, I think what we look at, we can't predict it. Obviously it's, it's unpredictable because you can't predict tomorrow. It's not a private equity. 
but we are looking at returning a 30% internal rate of return. So that is what we, we are aiming and targeting is the 30% IRR over the total uh, um, time period of the fund. So that's a three to four times return on your capital is what we're targeting uh, to Andre. Awesome. And then um, another question then is from um, Ray. Ray is asking, how soon are you able to deploy capital invested in this phase? So we've got, so it's a good question because we've got about 200 million rands worth of deal flow right now that we're looking at. So we can invest all our capital, but we don't want to rush it because we've still got time, but they, we, all will, we will be making quite a few investments in the next uh, couple of months. We've already got them and we in quite uh, late stage discussions, but we're seeing new deal flow every single day. So that's why we don't want to rush into all the deals while we still got a bit of time. We'd rather make sure we get to the best deals opposed to get to the quickest deals. Fantastic. And Bernard is saying it sounds like it's much more expensive to invest now as opposed to six months ago. What do you have to say about that? Uh, sorry, the question was? Um, he says it sounds like it's more expensive to invest now as opposed to six months ago. So I'm just asking, do you have like a... Yeah, so, it's no, so as I was saying earlier, from February to now, it's exactly the same price. It's 1,400 Rand per share is what we raised six, roughly six months ago. And we're raising it at exactly the same price. It's 1,400 Rand per share. So, so, so it hasn't gone up at all. We've actually left it at, even though the share price has gone up, we've left it at the same, the same amount. Okay, cool. And then another question, if you invest in other companies, let's say next month, will we be exposed to those companies as well? Correct. So we've got the 100 and, 120 million already. So let's, whatever we raise now, let's say we get it to 150 million, you'll be owners of not only the seven companies, but all the future companies we invest in through this, uh, to this fund. So you'll have access to both. Okay, fantastic. And then another person, Anonymous, is asking, what is the length of time of the fund? So I'm guessing, how long has it been going on? Well, just, I think that's a, it's an important question there because if you try and uh, sell your shares within five years, SARS will take their tax back. So it's, it's a minimum of five years you have to hold it for. We don't guarantee you can sell it after five years. We would look for a buy after five, five years if you did want to sell it. But I'd say the time period is between five and eight years, maybe, yeah. So it's around the five to eight year timeline. Say eight years, we should hopefully, the way, remember, the way we're going to get you your money back is to sell these companies and we pay you back uh, the profits as dividends. So I'd say between five and eight years is probably the right length of time that uh, you should be looking at. But if you want dividend payments every month or every year, this is not the right fund for you. Okay, great. And then um, Vali. Essa is asking that uh, he's essentially aware of the five-year lock um, for tax purposes, um, but will these funds continue to deliver returns and stuff after uh, that period, or will it be closed off and sold to potential investors? You know, the, 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 the time period we would take as long as it takes us to sell that last company. So when we say five to eight years, we're probably looking at the last company being sold, say, in eight years. It could, could be nine years. It could be 10 years. We don't really know. We're just estimating but it's definitely five years your minimum. We wouldn't sell all the company in five years. You know, to really build a billion dollar company or a billion rand company, it takes five to 10 years. So some of these companies that we've already been building them for two to three years already, it'll take say another five years to get hopefully to a sale or eight years. I'm not sure exactly of, of, the, of the tenure. So it's a minimum of five years. I'd say it's, it's, it's between five and eight years. So I'd say probably not earlier than eight years you're gonna get out of the fund, get all your money back and get, get your profits. Okay, fantastic. Anonymous is asking, um, what are the fees? And I think we lay them out in the prospectuses and the brochures we provide, uh, right, Clive? It is in the prospectus, that's correct. Yeah. That's okay. something you have to look at the Easy Equities platform to get that exact uh, information. Exactly. So we will actually share the links uh, once we put this up on YouTube. And if you receive the email, the act we linked to the actual uh, instrument. Um, and then, so we also answered Ray's question. He's asking how disinvestment would work. And you actually referred to that just now. Um, and then I want to go back to Dean Hoff's question. So he's saying, if we purchase about 25 grand through EE, um, through Easy Equities, would you still get that tax benefit for 25,000 grand? You get the tax benefit for whatever, as long as you've got taxable income, you'll get the tax benefit through, it doesn't matter if it's through Easy Equities or directly through ourselves. So Easy Equities, will issue you that tax certificate and you'll get the saving. Fantastic. Um, and then we've got, now we've got a lot of, we're going into a very complex territory, which uh, 
doesn't necessarily suit our easy community, but we'll go there. I believe we should. Um, Justin is asking, is the 30% IRR included? Um, does the 30% IRR include tax saving, which, you know, as uh, 12J companies tend to use in the calculation? So, we, so we're aiming at 30% excluding the tax saving or including the tax saving, sorry, including the tax saving. So we aim, if you want to do the math, I think the best thing to do is say, if you invest 100,000, you're looking at getting about 300,000 Rand back. And that's after tax. So that'll be the, probably the safest way for me to explain it to you without using the IRRs and everything like that. That's a significant return. So 100,000 Rand will turn into 300,000 Rand over the lifetime of the fund. Okay, great. It could be significantly more, could be less, but that's what we aim at is about a, a, a three times return on your capital. Okay, fantastic. Um, and then I've got Muzi, a question from Muzi here, who says, um, and I'm, I'm going to just read this out because it's a bit hard to make out, but he's asking when there's liquidation um, in mentioned companies are safe. So I guess I'll ask you, when you have to liquidate your holdings from certain companies, uh, how do you, so I guess you, 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 you have your own risk um, mitigating uh, methods in the fund, right? So can you explain any of those or share them with us? So I think, so let's talk about a liquidation. If one of our companies got liquidated, i.e. went bankrupt and went insolvent and got liquidated, we have something we always um, include in every single one of our legal agreements with these companies is a liquidation preference. So let's say we put in 10 million rand. We'll put in a liquidation preference of 10 million rand. So the first 10 million rand that comes out of the company, let's just say we sell the intellectual property or there's 10 million rand left, that will go to Kalon. It wouldn't go to the, the, the founders of the company. So they've messed up. They've destroyed the company for whatever reason. We, if there is 10 million, we would get the 10 million back. Obviously, if, if there's nothing, we've lost all our money. But so we do protect our shareholders with this liquidation preference that we would get at least that uh, our in, uh, investment back as, 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 uh, as part of the liquidation preference. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And Vix. Vickers is actually asking how many shares qualifies one for the tax benefit. And again, I want to presume it's, it's down to how much you put in. I mean, there's no minimum that qualifies them for the tax benefit. I think it's a, I think it's the easy equities platform. And I think it's a hundred rand. So if you put a hundred yeah. rand, you get the tax saving on the hundred rand. Exactly. So we, but that's, that's a minimum. So you, you have to, it, the only minimum is a hundred rand and you can't put anything below that on easy equities in general. So I just like to say that to, Big. And you get the tax saving on that 100 grand. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and then Anonymous is asking about the shareholding structuring. Now, I don't know if that is, is it not included in the prospectus, Clive, the shareholding? Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a long answer. And I think in the interest of time, it is in the prospectus. So it's, uh, you just get the certain number of shares, the, just, just briefly, the investors as yourselves would, would get norm, ordinary shares. We get A shares as the as the manager. We get four A shares for every uh, um, one ordinary share that's uh, that's issued, and so it's, and it comes back to the fees again. So the way we make any money is we charge a two and a half percent management fee, which is how I pay the salaries, I pay for rent, I pay for all the reg, 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 um, legislation stuff. We, you know, we've got a cap two license. We're part of SARS. We're part of uh, National Treasury. So to pay all these fees and costs is, is the two and a half percent. And then we make our money from those A shares, which is 20%. So once we've, if you put in, let's just take, we, you put in a hundred million Rand, we pay the back the hundred million Rand first before we take any money. Only after that we take, through our A shares, we take 20% and you as investors get 80%. So if we sell the fund, let's say for 500 million, we've got a hundred million in the fund. We pay you back your 100 million first. And of the 400 million, we would take 20%, which is 80 million, and we'll pay you back 320 million. So that's how the, the, through, the through the company structure would work. Mm, great overview. Thanks. Thanks, Clive. And then um, um, Bernard um, is back to ask Are profits capped at a certain IRR, or does all profit get distributed? No, no. There's no, there's no cap at all. So we just we keep on trying to reach for the stars. We're never going to cap it. You know, we, we want to try and hit the 30%, but if we hit 40%, 50%, that will be fantastic. Because we know if we do that, we'll just get so much more capital coming into our, into our follow-on funds. Mm, I love that. Okay, cool. And then Anonymous is asking, and this is, I guess, a bit of a tricky one, because they're asking, what is the 
um, advantage of investing directly, um, Clive? <laughs> yeah, directly look, look, look yeah, you know, this, this, is, this, this um, webinar is arranged by Easy Equity. So this investment has to go by Easy Equities. You know, that's just the gentleman's agreement I've got with Stanway and his team that it needs to go through Easy Equities. But there's really no benefit otherwise to going directly with a fund. You get exactly the same, exactly the same feedback, communication, returns. It makes no difference whether you go through easy equities or you go directly with us. And so I think the benefit really is um, for someone like me who doesn't have um, like a 10,000 rand or anything more than that, um, that we actually have access to it, but it's a more collective thing as well. So um, that's one of the benefits for our community. Um, and then Z is actually asking me, um, is this recording going to be available? Um, yes, we will upload it on YouTube and then we will share it on our social media channels as well. Um, so this will become available. Thank you so much. Um, and then Ngobani is asking projections again. And I just want to say, Ngobani, we can't, um, as an FSP, we can't give you projections. Um, um, uh, past performances as well, that's what we can stick to. We can't give you projections right now. Um, great and we have a few minutes left clive and i just wanted to say to ask do you have any sort of um closing statements um while we do you have any closing statements yeah yeah definitely i think i you know to to the to the listeners i think it's uh everyone talks about every business is becoming a digital business and every business is basically becoming a digital business so it's a very very exciting time right now to be investing in digital companies because there's such great opportunities in South Africa, in Africa, and around the world. So a number of our companies already, take Mobis as an example, we've already re-domiciled the company in Delaware in, in the United States. And our net, we're raising capital, this $4 million, to take it to the United States to roll the technology out in the US. Pink Chatbot, we've opened up in Luxembourg, so we're taking the technology out to Europe to roll it out there. So these technologies, the nice thing about them, we're not manufacturing widgets, which we have to then get sent around the world. It's technology. So it's bits and bytes. So we can just build it once and we can take it out to the world. And that's what we're doing. That's why we're getting such incredible growth because we are setting bits and bytes. We're not setting physical physical goods. So the, 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 to invest in these sort of companies is very capitalized. It's very capital efficient. We're not spending hundreds of million rands of working capital building a plant or building a power station or building a something else. We're just building technology which is relatively cheap to build, and we can make a lot of money because once it's built once, we can sell it millions and millions and millions of times. So yeah, that's why it's exciting now. Whether you put in 100 Rand or you put in a million Rand, it's an exciting time now to just be part of this digital ecosystem that we're helping build and create jobs. You know, Stanwa said it as well. We've created 200 jobs in the last two years with our company. So we've created a lot of jobs. We're increasing the fiscus. We've created jobs. So everything this 12J was, in, was, was intended for is what we're doing right now. And job creation, as we know in this country, is absolutely critical. Love to hear it, Clive. And then if I can just ask in your opinion, the three, I guess, main benefits of having this fund on easy equities. If you could give me three. I have them listed here, but I just want to see if we... If we well, I think the first one is a lot of people can't afford the 70,000 rand. So this is democratizer. So you can, if you just got 100 rand, you can start with 100 and who knows, you know, maybe when this opens up again, you could put in more one day but who knows what's going to happen in the future. So it does let you get in <clears throat> at 100 Rand opposed to having to have 70,000 Rand. I think number two is you already are a customer of Easy Equity. So they're already dealing with you and you know Easy Equities, you trust Easy Equities. We work closely with Easy Equity. So it's a very, you've got a, 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 trusted, um, uh, a trusted partner in Easy Equities. You don't necessarily know Kalon yet. You don't have to know Kalon because you'd be dealing directly with, uh, with Easy Equities. Not that you can't deal with us, but you've got that, that relationship as well. And yeah, thirdly, I just think it's, a, as I said, it just gives you the opportunity of getting in. And I think, so you can come in at any price, as long as 100 Rand, you can come in and be part of this really exciting new transformational digital technology way that's, uh, that's, that's taking us all by storm. And for me, my, my three points too, most of them have to do mostly with Kalon. And it's that you're um, essentially people to be investing in the tech, which is the future in tech disruptive um, companies. Um, and the tax, tax, uh, tax efficiency of this kind of product as well. And then lastly, also as Clive has stated, um, less minimums than you would have otherwise um, had to uh, put up. So that's essentially it, Clive. Um, this has been an awesome chat actually, because every time I speak to you, it's like really insightful and like I'm re reminded 
of how disruptive and what you guys are trying to achieve here. This is amazing stuff. So I'm a big fan. Summer, just to close out, um, just uh, I'll give you the, the email address of uh, the person. If you've got any questions, uh, just send an email to Leron V, L E R O N V, at K A L O N, Kalon, V P, Victory Popper. Dot com. And I'm sure Steinmark can send it out to all of you. So just send your question to Laron, Laron V at, at canonvp.com, and he'll get back to you, phone you, or I'll phone you, and we'll answer any questions you might have. We understand we only have 45 minutes today, but if there are any questions, we've always got time for you to walk you through it telephonically, either by email, whatever, whatever uh, your preference is. So don't, don't be shy to, to reach out to us if you have any further questions or you want any further clarification on anything. Ah, oh, Clive, you're the people's person. I love this, man. Cool. Um, so Clive actually has another important call to hop on at quarter two, um, right? Well, yeah, in the next five minutes. So we're going to let you go right now, Clive. Thank you so much for joining this easy webinar. Um, to everyone who has uh, joined the webinar, we are going to share it on YouTube. So Z and everyone who's asked will share it on YouTube. We'll include the prospectus, the link to the, uh, to the product, and the email address that you asked for. But it's Leron v at kalonvp.com or dot co.za? No, dot com. Dot com. <laughs> the wrong so, v at kalonvp.com. Awesome. Thank you to everyone who has joined. Um, this is awesome. Um, have a great day going forward. Thank you, Clive. Yeah, um, everyone have a, thanks for attending and have a fantastic weekend. And Sandra, thank, thanks to you. I really appreciate it. Cheers, everyone. Have a great one. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye. So we